having completed our plastic analysis part now we will see the design part of steel structures so for this design purpose there are some theories available first one is working stress method and then there is limit state method and the last one is ultimate load method so the plastic analysis what we studied is a part of this ultimate load method where we try to figure out what can be the ultimate load on the material and using that we go for the design so in the ultimate load method we try to use we try to make the use of the plastic behavior of the material whereas on the other hand when we talk about the working stress method so i already discussed so what we do in working stress method we say the maximum possible stress in this material in the steel is its sealed stress and we divide the sealed stress by a factor of safety to obtain our working stress or we call it as the permissible stress so our permissible stress will remain somewhere here that is in the elastic range so what does this method method do it gives a safe design obviously because we are fairly in this elastic range and this this is going to be the maximum stress that the material will face in its life so obviously we are on the safe side but what we miss out here so we have already seen that steel has a large reserve of strength after this yield part or this yield point so we are not making use of it so we are making the design uneconomical and and steel being a very expensive material economy is a major concern so that's why we choose the limit state method over the working stress method so at least limit state method should be used so for major majority of the part we'll see the limit state method here and some what of this working stress method also because it is still asked in some of the exams so what is the difference here in the limit state method that working stress method does, doesn't have so in this method we say we design our structure for some objective and that objective is to stay or the we can say the structure should remain fit or the structure should serve its intended purpose and that is that is not even indefinitely it will have a design life so it should serve its purpose for its design life and the structure we say here that it, a structure does not only fa fail when it collapses it also fails when it misses out on some serviceability requirements and what are the serviceability requirements it can be deflection vibration so if we if we are having excessive vibration and in the structure then also we cannot use it safely so that is also a criteria when our structure stops serving its purpose so these criteria of the strength of or of the serviceability these define our limit states so we will say like what should be the maximum deflection that is in some cases it would be span by 150 so that is giving us a limit state similarly for collapse or brittle failure we can get some limit states and we try to avoid these limit states in our design so the limit state method is a probabilistic design approach and how do we achieve this probability so you might have heard about the characteristics load and characteristics strength that is if we talk about the load so it is such that that 95% of the times this is not not exceeded for in the entire design life so we achieve a level of probability or the we can say on the other hand there is a 
risk of 5% but we work with that because that risk is very low so we can go with that so this is the this is how we go for the design in limit state method so obviously this limit state method is depending depended upon two limit states basically first one is limit state of strength and the second one is limit state of serviceability so the limit state of strength covers it covers collapse of the structure or the sudden collapse we can say or fatigue if the failure is going to be there due to this fatigue or brittle failure is there so these are considered in the limit state of strength and other one is limit state of serviceability so in the limit state of serviceability we say that our structure should not have excessive deformations or deflections we can say or it should not have vibrations or it should be it should show some resistance or enough resistance to fire so these are some of the limit states for serviceability now how do we achieve these design so we will design for the strength and we will check for the serviceability requirements that is how we go for the design and after that so even if we are choosing this 95% probability that means we are skipping that 5% so for that we use some safety factors so here the safe total safety factor is divided in two partial safety factors that is we will apply one safety factor for material and other safety factor for load that means we will decrease the strength of the material we will say that the strength is decreased by some part because in the fabrication or during the construction also there may be some misplacement or some temperature stresses and other things like that due to these things we may not achieve the full strength of the material so for that we divide the strength of the material with some partial safety factor and similarly for the load because there is a probability that higher load can come so we multiply our load with this partial safety factor so that makes our total safety of the structure so the code has given the values for these partial safety factors for loads and as well as for material so for the loads various co combination uh, combinations are there dl is dead load ll is live load cl is crane load here wind load is wl el is earthquake load and al is al is accidental load so there are various combinations for limit state of strength and as well as limit strength limit state of serviceability so if you are considering these three that is dead load live load crane load then it is 1.5 dead load 1 plus 1.5 live load plus 1.05 crane load and similarly if we are considering the wind load or earthquake load also so in this case either wind load will be considered or earthquake load will be considered because the probability of occurring both of them together is negligible it or it is very low so we do not consider both of them together we will consider either one of them which is whichever is giving the higher value of this total load so we can say 1.2 times dead load plus 1.2 times live load plus 1.05 times crane load plus 0.6 times wind load or earthquake load similarly other method other combinations are also there so this the multiplication of 1.5 in dead load we do when when these forces that is wind load or earthquake load it has a stabilizing effect stabilizing stabilizing effect on structure 
that is if the wind is acting in such a way that it is stabilizing the structure then we will use 1.5 the, times the dead load and if it is overturning the structure then we will use 0.9 times the dead load so these are the combinations and similarly for serviceability for the serviceability part these combinations are same as in RCC so you can remember from here or from there either one is sufficient and after that there is partial safety factors for materials that we denote with gamma m so if resistance is governed by yielding then we use 1.1 and if it is yield governed by buckling then we use then also we use 1.1 if it is governed by ultimate stress then we use 1.25 so mostly in case of bolts bolts rivets and this welding it is mostly governed by ultimate stress so here this partial safety factor is going to be 1.25 so here also you can see that for this connection it is divided into two parts that is shop fabrication and field fabrication so for mostly it is same in shop and field just the welding is different because in the field we do not achieve very high accuracy or very very we can say the preci precision is not as much as as it is in the shop so for that in the field this factor of safety is 1.5 otherwise it is just 1.25 in all the cases so now we can move for the connection part so for, for the connection we are going to study the rivets so rivets in brief and bolts we will cover in detail and welding also we will cover in detail 